A.B. Lowe, físico, teórico de Harvard. Hi, A.B., thanks for being with us in Nagozo TV. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on this special day. A.B., we are talking uh, about uh, Thiria Yadlas. Uh, we have uh, a lot of questions. Uh, is Thiria Yadlas the strangest object ever to enter the, the solar system? Uh, yeah, I would argue so, because uh, I uh, identified 15 anomalies that uh, this object shows, and uh, I'm not saying that it's definitely technological, I'm just saying that uh, we should understand these anomalies, it will help us figure out what is outside the solar system. Uh, do you think uh, that Three Ayadlas is not the first spaceship of uh, an advanced civilization? Do you think that uh, we had more in the in the past? Um, yeah, we uh, did not have the telescopes that allow us to detect interstellar objects until the last uh, decade when we started serving the sky for near-Earth objects. and. Uh, then we found the uh, Oumuamua, after that Borisov, and now uh, Three Eye Atlas. And uh, the point is that there could have been uh, many such uh, visitors before them, uh, and uh, we just were not aware of that. But uh, it's, it's our duty to check what enters uh, our backyard from the cosmic street, because among the rocks there might be uh, evidence for a neighbor. And uh, that's uh, our responsibility in terms of uh, making sure that our planet is safe and perhaps uh, also to get inspiration from what other technological civilizations might do. A.B., uh, everybody is talking about three Ayadlas like a comet. Uh, how can a comet produce X-rays? Uh, how can, how can uh, the scientific explain this? Right. So. Um, Whenever there is a, a cloud of gas that is impacted by the solar wind, um, it can produce, it can glow in X-rays because the solar wind contains energetic particles that bombard the atoms and molecules in that gas cloud. And we know that the uh, 3A Atlas has a plume of gas around it. In fact, we see a jet that is in the direction of the sun. We saw it all the, t uh, the way from July when the object was discovered. Until now, this week, we, uh, the jet is very prominent in the direction of the sun, completely opposite to what we usually see in the case of comets, a tail. Here it is, an anti-tail. And moreover, we learned over the past uh, week that uh, the Three Eye Atlas, the nucleus of it, is rotating, and the rotation axis is aligned with the direction to the sun, which is a very unusual coincidence, to within eight degrees or so. Uh, and that is surprising. The chance of that happening at random is half a percent. It means the object has a permanent day side and a permanent night side. And the other surprising fact is that there is this jet which is tightly collimated, again, to about eight degrees. And uh, it's difficult to understand how a pocket of ice on the surface of a rock would lead to such a tight collimation, because if you just warm up a pocket of ice, you end up getting a full hemisphere of gas and, and the dust. You will not get a tightly collimated jet. So these are anomalies. These are things we don't understand. Maybe there is some natural explanation to that. For example, you can imagine a hole on the surface of, of the object, and then it's just like the barrel of a gun. Uh, when the gas comes out of it, it's collimated, but that would mean that the sunlight entering the hole uh, would do so only at a very specific angle when it's above the hole, and you would get it only for a short time. And so it's not at all clear how you collimate uh, such a jet. Why is the jet pointed at the sun and not away from the sun the way we see in comets? Um, there are things we don't understand about this visitor, and um, I'm just uh, saying we should monitor and get as much data as possible all the, the way uh, as it goes towards Jupiter. It will arrive to Jupiter on March 16th, and uh, I'm sure that in the coming days and weeks we'll hear much more about new data. We already uh, yesterday heard about uh, data collected when the object was closest to the sun, um, from a, a, a mission that is on its way uh, to Jupiter, um, and uh, that is the uh, Europa Clipper 
spacecraft and it took uh, an image in the ultraviolet of uh, three atlas that shows uh, the jets coming from it so there is a lot to understand and my hope is that in a month or so i'll be able to tell you whether it's a natural object or something else you used to talk about 13 uh, anomalies uh, what is the the most important for you um, the most unusual one is the fact that the trajectory is aligned with the plane of the planets. This is a, a, a great fortune for us because we can observe the object. It's bright and we can use all the space assets uh, to observe it uh, as well as telescopes on Earth. But um, it's surprising because the chance for that uh, to be within five degrees of the plane of the planets is just uh, one in 500. Uh, but uh, I would argue also that the anti-tail such a thing was never observed, especially on a distance, on a scale uh, of about a million kilometers. The length of this anti-tail, the jet towards the sun, is about a million kilometers. It's at least 10 times longer than it is wide. And I've never seen that uh, in the context of uh, comets. Of course, many people just looking at the image, they say, oh, look, there is a tail. But, but just realize where the sun is. The sun is in the direction of this jet. It's not away from the, it's not a tail, it's an anti-tail. And Avi, the, the last question, are we ready to intercept an object like uh, three Atlas? Are we prepared for, uh, for this? Uh, I think we, we definitely should plan in the future to intercept objects like that so we can get a close-up photograph of the object. Uh, and also uh, in order perhaps even to land on it. Uh, that will clear any ambiguities about the nature of the object. And of course, if it's a rock, we could take a scoop of the material, bring it back to Earth for analysis, so we can infer if there are any building blocks of life that came on this rock from another star. But if it happens to be technological, of course, we have a much uh, steeper learning curve. And uh, if there is a button on that uh, technological object, the question is whether to use the robotic arm of the lander to press this button uh, out of curiosity. A lot of questions uh, about three Ayadlas. AB, thanks for being with us. Thanks for your work. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Avi.